Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Victor Juma, Business Manager for Syngenta Professional Solutions in East Africa. Uh, for, uh, and again, is to welcome all of you participating in today's webinar and our panelists. Uh, in today's call, we have uh, participants drawn from Kenya, uh, Ethiopia, Uganda, and Tanzania. So it's uh, very much uh, across East Africa. And today is just the first of a series of webinars. We have three webinars lined up. And uh, in today's focus, we'll focus on uh, crop application, uh, mainly looking at uh, crop penetration and coverage. Uh, then next week on Wednesday, we shall uh, have another webinar where we shall discuss about water volumes and how to get them right. And the week after, we shall talk about adjuvants and uh, whether they fit uh, in our applications. Uh, speaking to us today, we have um, uh, uh, Ruth Roven. He's no stranger to East Africa. Uh, he's a crop application expert uh, for Europe, Africa, and Middle East. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Mark uh, Frazen, uh, based in our uh, Switzerland office. He's our application manager responsible for Africa, and he takes care of all the trials uh, regarding application, uh, uh, crop application. And he also has uh, some experience uh, of Kenya. So both of them are not strangers to Kenya or East Africa. So they are well aware about our cropping culture and uh, the way we, uh, we, we grow our crop and spray. Uh, I'd also like to introduce um, the team from Syngenta in Kenya. We have our technical manager, uh, Ms. Daisy Ngeno, well represented. We have our crop advisors. Uh, Biruk Melese from Ethiopia, we have Daniel Remba from Kenya, and Kennedy Onyango also from Kenya. As you can also realize, all of us are on mute except uh, the panelists. Uh, and we'll be expecting that uh, you put in your questions uh, through the Q&A uh, section. If you look at your computer or laptop uh, just beneath it, you'll see a section on Q&A. So kindly use that section and not the chat section to ask uh, your questions. You can put in your comments, also send in your feedback. And uh, if you have any technical issues uh, regarding um, the webinar, you can also post it on the Q&A section. And finally, we shall record this webinar uh, so that you can use it for future reference. And those of those who missed the webinar can also have a chance uh, to see what we discussed. Uh, thank you very much, and I'd like to hand over to Mr. Root uh, to set the ball rolling. So thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Victor. Thank you uh, for this invitation to, uh, to talk a little bit about application. Um, this session will be uh, not to judge on how uh, applications are done in, uh, at the moment, but it's more to create awareness of perhaps how we can improve uh, applications. Um, as Victor already told, Mr. Mark Frazen from the Global Application Team will joining us and he will assist me when there are uh, questions perhaps in the, in the Q&A at the end. And Mark is joining the Global Application Team of Basel, um, which we are very proud to say that this team has all over 35 years of experience in doing application trials all over the globe, all over the world, and all kinds of uh, uh, crops. So the experience is also within Syngenta, of course, together with the growers all over the world. So as I mentioned, it's not to judge whether something is done right or wrong, uh, but when you look at this picture, you see a lot of mist hanging over the top of the crop. This mist will evaporate, and when it's evaporated or will drift off, it will never come into the crop. So this is a uh, this is this is a pity. This is a loss of product, which you could better have on the crop. Um, um, this together would bring. Uh, we would like to talk about you about uh, droplet sizes, etc., to improve efficacy 
save money and save also, which also important, is save the environment. So when you look at application uh, uh, quality, the first thing is uh, the product itself, its intrinsic effect. We say normally 50% of the product is 50% uh, of the result is the intrinsic effect. The other 50% comes from you. So that makes that the sprayer and also the crop manager, they have a real important job to control issues on the farm, like diseases and pests. It's about timing of the application. It's a setup of the equipment and the calibration using the right nozzle to get the best coverage and penetration. And this will always be a compromise when you look uh, at a crop about coverage and penetration. So in the next slide, we have some questions to you, which we want to uh, ask you to answer in a poll. So our question is, what sprayer pressure do you currently use? So can everybody see that? Uh, should have just come up as a pop-up. There we go. 11 to 20 bars. Okay, it's changing still. Yeah, 11 to 20 looks like it's uh, the most it's popular. The and the second is greater than 20 greater bars. Than 20, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 44%. Has voted. Somebody's put in the chat 40 to 30, 35 to 40 bar. So greater than another greater than 20. Yeah. Anybody else for voting? 50% now. Yeah. Oh, a couple more. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty clear. I'll, uh, I'll end that poll now. So 11 to 20 bars is 55% of the uh, delegates and the other is 40% greater than 20%. So it means pre a pretty high uh, uh, pressure on the nozzle. Do you? Do I have to click it away again? No, so it should, it should be gone. Okay. Okay. So and now we have a second question to you. What nozzle do you uh, use at the moment? So you have A, a hollow cone, B, an air induction hollow cone, C is a flat fan, and D is an air induction flat fan. And then secret option number five, I don't know. Hopefully not many in there. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, forgot about it. <laughs> Oh, it looks like hollow cone is uh, winning that one. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you thought people would do? That's what I thought people would use. That's what we understood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Another vote in the uh, chat for hollow cone. Okay. Lovely. So that makes, uh, what do you have? Do you have over 75% that uh, has chosen the hollow cone nozzle. So when you look at that, um, the higher the pressure you use, the smaller the droplets will get. And also the, the, the choice of using a hollow cone nozzle means small droplets. And small droplets, they are really a big advantage when you look at coverage. But is it only coverage that we are looking at? Or can I have also small droplets have a disadvantage? That's the thing we want to talk about with you today. Because the importance of droplet size, when we look at a fine droplet, you have a uniform coverage. That's fantastic. But have you a higher efficiency of the product? Well, that first starts with the question, 
which kind of product do I use? Do you use a systemic or a non-systemic product? Because finer droplets, they dry earlier. And a systemic product has to be in solution for uptake into the leaf. The sooner the product is dry on the leaf, the sooner the uptake will be gone. A non-systemic product should be really nicely recovered on the leaf, and then it can be an advantage. However, our formulations have also uh, included adjuvants, which can help to uh, improve the spreading also when you use a coarser droplet. The disadvantage of a fine droplet is the high drift and evaporation potential, which is a threat, threat for your wallet and for the environment and can be also giving you less, um, less efficacy because a lot of product is lost already. The other thing is it has a poor penetration capacity. So when you have some targets that are deep in the canopy, you just can't reach it because all the spray liquid will be on the periphery of the crop. Then we have coarser droplets. You have less coverage. That's it's completely true. Lower efficacy of the product, that can be some issue in some cases, but the big advantage is you have lower drift and lower evaporation potential, which is really good. And it has a high penetration capacity. To find the right balance between those two, the cause and the fine, to have best of both worlds, that will bring you always in a split. It's always a compromise, but you have always have to consider what the purpose of the spraying is and which product you are using. So when you look at droplet size influencing factors, the first thing is what is really influ influencing uh, is the pressure. The higher the pressure, the finer the droplets. The higher the pressure doesn't mean a better penetration because you're creating way much finer droplets. And they have not the power as a really coarse droplet has. So the lower the pressure, the coarser the droplets. Then the nozzle size, the flow rate. The, small, the lower the flow rate, the smaller the droplets. The higher the, small, uh, the flow rate, the larger the droplets. The flow rate means how much of the liquid will be uh, uh, coming out of the, the nozzle in one minute. So that's the flow rate. But even nozzle size, which is uh, a thing that is more important than nozzle size, is a nozzle type. And you can choose between a lot of nozzles. And when you look at the hollow cone nozzle, completely at the left of this slide, it produces only very fine to fine droplets. And that's, that can be of some issue. So droplet size and coverage will always be a, a compromise. Of course, with the same um, volume of uh, liquid you have with 50 microns, 512 droplets. With 200 microns, you have only eight droplets. This, this is a nicer coverage, but is only coverage the main factor you have to uh, look at or is also the, the time that the product is in, in, a, in a solution a factor and can it be spread by some adjuvants that can be a factor. The other thing is those 50 microns, they give you a nice spreading on the leaf, but will it reach the leaf? Will it actually be there? or just drifting around in the air and then evaporate. This is the main issue you have, you have to think about if that's the right choice to do. Sorry, the other thing is to consider also the mode of action. So spine droplets, they are dry really easily. And when it is a systemic product, there will be no uptake anymore of the product. So the effect of droplet sizes, it's always a uh, it's com uh, it's always a compromise. You can see here the BCPC classification. So all 
uh, nozzles are classified for a, a certain size of droplets. You can see here the ultra fine is 50 microns. And then you have the ultra coarse, it's bigger than 622. Now this, this is really, you have to look for the, the compromise in between this. When you look at ultra fine, the coverage is fantastic. And with ultra coarse, it's really too poor. But when you look from the other hand to how the penetration capacity is of this ultra fine nozzle droplet, that's really poor. And for ultra coarse, it's really strong. You can just throw the droplet further than you can throw a really small droplet. And the other thing is, when you have an ultra fine, it's not only throwing the droplet, it's also the risk of drift. They are really driftable or evaporation, so it never reaches the crop. And this risk is an ultra coarse really low. So finding the right droplet size is a compromise in between penetration and coverage, between the risk or drift uh, and evaporation. So when you look at a medium-sized uh, uh, nozzle, it produces a nice in-between uh, droplet size. So from 177 to 218, it just doesn't uh, produce one size. It produces a, a spectrum of droplets, smaller and coarser ones. But in, in general, it produces the better be a size droplet, so a nice compromise to use in your crop. Now, when we come to hollow cone nozzles and droplet sizes, we saw it before that it was completely on the left of your slide. When you look at here, this is a graph of the of the manufacturer, and this is T jet. And when you look at, it, take a close look at it. What which? Uh, pressure you even use from two bars until 20 bars. There are people who use 20 bars or more. It's all fine or very fine, which indicates that there are really small droplets which can uh, evaporate or drift really easily off. So, just beside that holocone nozzle. We have also an air induction holocone nozzle. And when you look at it, it produces coarser droplets, even very coarse when you, you use a really low pressure. But when you go to higher pressures, you can produce medium sized droplets. So that, this could be a good alternative for the normal holocone nozzle. Air induction, uh, air induction also means it sucks a little air into the spraying liquid, but makes the droplets coarser. And from that perspective, they are uh, le less driftable and less uh, susceptible for evaporation. So when the droplet leaves your sprayer, what will happen then? Well, fine and very fine uh, nozzles of uh, very fine droplets, when they leave the, uh, the, the nozzle sprayer, when they, they are released, they, the small droplets, they go with the flow of the wind that will uh, be created by the spray. So when they uh, come to an obstacle like a, a big leaf, the air can't go right through the leaf. It has to go around it, and it will carry the small droplets with it. So when you have coarser droplets, they have their own will. They won't go with the flow uh, at the same time, and they just go right through, and they will hit the target. So the wider the leaf, the bigger the leaf is, the better possibility you have to hit it is with coarser droplets. It's also indicated in this uh, droplet size and recollection probability on the target. The larger the collector is, the more difficult it gets to the droplets impinge. So you can see a 50 micron droplet, it will hit. This is a soy leaf. 
it's where 10% of the droplets will hit the leaf. From 80 microns, only 30%. 100 microns, only 65%. We are talking about the possibility in a lab that it will uh, reach the leaf. We don't talk in this case about evaporation or drift. It's just what can uh, hit the leaf. The smaller the leaf is, the better also smaller droplets can reach the target. And when you look at insects, they will collect the spray liquid uh, by flying. So that doesn't mean, uh, that doesn't, uh, matter how big the droplet size is. In the next slide, we are going to show you two videos. These are high speed videos. It means the videos were made by taking 5,000 pictures per second. That's a thing we can't, as a human being, we can't see with our eyes. So we will show you the video with 50 pictures per second. And that's a nice thing because we can see exactly what is happening during spraying and after spraying. You can really visualize what is happening uh, more in the air than on the leaf. So the left is a coarse droplet, and at the right, there's a fine droplet. And I thought they should start now. So, some technical issue. If you look at the right, you can see nicely the droplets falling, and more or less, that's it. But when you look at uh, the left, sorry, when you look at the right, you can see the mist, and the mist is hanging around there, for a lot of seconds. This mist will never reach the crop or just a small, a small amount of it. And what we measure there also is that 80 to 20% of the smaller than uh, uh, droplets were smaller than 150 microns. Those droplets we know, they only evaporate or drifting away. They never reach the crop. You could see until the end, the mist hanging around there. In 2013, Syngenta did uh, some application trials in roses. It was done in Kenya, and it was also done in Colombia. This is a result of a trial in Kenya, which we uh, looked at the effect on leaf deposits. And how we do that? We use a tracer. A tracer we spray then in this kind of trials. A tracer is a fluorescence dye. Uh, which this one we can use to measure the spray depositions and also the coverage. We collect samples in the greenhouse after the sprayings of the different plots that we sprayed. We collect the samples, bring them to a lab, wash the fluorescence dye off, and can see exactly how much was located on which part of the plant, how much of the product we applied. So if you look here, you see on the left, the nozzle, a very fine nozzle. And we look at the top periphery, which is a little bit high. You couldn't reach it completely with a fine droplet. Whereas a medium droplet is heavier, you can throw it further, and you had more deposition on the top. The same goes for the center, which is even harder to reach because there are more obstacles in between it. When you look at the, uh, the, uh, the middle part of the plant, there weren't the biggest differences, but for the lower parts, you can see again that the distance and the density of the crop is higher, so a better penetration when you use a medium side droplet. This is about deposition. So how much of the product I applied really reaches those parts of the plant deposits. The next thing is we pick the leaves, etc. We also scan them on a scanner to see 
what is the average coverage. And again, you can see that uh, the fine nozzle has nice coverage. It's, it's uh, really good, uh, especially in the top. But when you look at the average coverage of a medium-sized nozzle, which is coarser, then on average, it's more equal on the crop. And even in, uh, in the difficult parts, it has a better coverage. So the small trufflets only made a better coverage in the top. But for the rest, the medium size had an average uh, picture that was better. This means consequences of runoff and low canopy penetration. When you use a real small droplet, was not doesn't have the energy to penetrate the canopy and only covers and wetens the outside, the periphery of the crop, it means you have a lot of spray liquid on the outside of the crop. And this could lead to a runoff. And a runoff is something we don't want to have because we do pollute the environment, we lose money, and we have less efficacy. And especially when you have pests or diseases in the center of the, of the canopy, you just can't reach it. Next slide, again, is a question for you. I hope you can uh, help us in this poll to tell us about more what the average, speed, uh, average temperature is when you're spraying. There you go, you see everyone should be able to vote now. Oh, this one keeps changing a bit more than the other ones. It's a bit more variable. Yeah, yeah. Well, it will be depending on uh, what, which time of day you're spraying, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or how the weather conditions are in the area where you live. Yeah. That's quite evenly split between yeah. 15 and 25 degrees. That's good. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So at 20, 25 degrees, are we asking this because uh, we talk a lot about drifting, but also evaporation of droplets. And of course, temperature is a main factor for the evaporation time of a droplet. When you look at here, the droplet evaporation and droplet lifetime with a relative humidity of 30%, which is really low, and it has also a big influence, but we'll see that later. On a temperature of 25 degrees, when you look at droplet sizes from 80 to 150 microns, it will be disappeared, evaporated within 10 seconds. So low humidity and higher temperatures means that you will lose a lot of your spray um, product within 10 seconds. And that's a pity. I think it's something we all don't want. When you look at the life, uh, lifespan of droplets again, you can see that even uh, the relative humidity is more important even when you look at 20 degrees with 70% air humidity, the droplet lifetime will be 20 uh, seconds, whereas with 40%, it's only nine seconds. So bear that in mind, and this, this is from a 100 micron droplet. Bear this in mind because again, systemic products, they should, the uptake should take place when it still is in solution in the water that you spray it. When it's dry, it's just a, a crust, it's just a dry matter and it can't be, the uptake can't take place anymore. It has to be in solution. 
when we look at this, then we look at the evapor evaporation rate uh, uh, when you look at the uh, droplet size, the evaporation rate increases a tenfold when the droplet size increases from 450 to 200 millimeters to 200 to 100, a tenfold. So you can see how important the droplet size is. Um, then we come again to the uh, to the coverage of a uh, of of the product. Dro uh, bigger droplet sizes, they have a poorer capacity of coverage. But when the product is longer in solution, the uptake will uptake will be uh, take longer. It will be longer, so more time to have it getting into the leaf. So when you look at this picture again. And we see again this cloud of mist above of the, uh, the crop, which will be caused by a high pressure and a small droplet size. Perhaps it's rude to say, but when you look at it, it could mean that a lot of money goes up in the air. It will get, it get in, uh, in the environment. It's not where we want to have it. So it's a loss of money. It's a loss of environment because you're polluting environment and it's a loss of efficacy. And we want to keep our products into, in the market and we don't want to lose it because of uh, resistance issues, because the products don't work, because you under, uh, under do uh, you, you spray a lower dose rate because a part of it is just um, evaporating. The second thing is we don't want to lose products because there is more pressure from the government that we should take care of our products, that they don't, uh, shouldn't be found outside in the environment. And the third time is we want you to have a nice result when you did spray and that you have most out of, you get most out of your money when you do the spraying. So the first part of a general recommendation would be try, let's see, let's fi find out for yourself if you can move from a very fine, fine uh, droplet size to a more medium sized droplet size. So you have a better penetration, less drift and less evaporation. And a longer time that the product, the up, uh, uptake of the product will be. And the other thing is, Think about the timing. Spray in the early in the morning or late in the evening when the relative humidity is high, the highest of the day. I, I know it's always a compromise. You also have to apply a lot, but it's not always easy. But bear that in mind, the lower the uh, RH is, the lower your results will be. So we come back to the holocone nozzles and the droplet size. I'm sorry we saw a lot of people use the holocone nozzles, but I think try to use holocone nozzles with an air induction system in it. It creates coarser droplets until medium size you can have because the very fine and fine uh, droplet sizes of the normal hol holocone is no option anymore. We can't afford it to carry on like that, we think. So please bear in mind it and try if you can figure out to do it in a different way, to keep our products in the market so we can help you to, uh, to protect your crop. And uh, yeah, I think that's the most important message we want to give. So. Asanti Sana, and you can put your questions in a Q&A. Thank you, Rude. Uh, so yeah, we actually do already have a couple of questions. Um, so I will, I'll read them out um, for you. I think one of them you may have already answered is from uh, Tom. So when using systemic active ingredients and non-systemic actives, do you still need to have the same coverage? I think coverage. <clears throat> the contact with the leaf is of, of course important. The more contact you have, the more 
uh, ways to getting into the leaf is important. But when you only do it with, uh, with very small droplets that evaporate really easily, it's for non-systemic products not really the option because it's only getting into the leaf when it's in solution. And believe me, the uptake can be really slow. So you have to give it the time. So the time is key in that. Give it the time to have a decent uptake. So uh, thank you. Then we've got another one, which is uh, an anonymous can I, one. Can I add something? Yeah, yeah. of course. In between. Um, our compounds are also optimized. That means um, you, want, you want to reach the target. That means you need penetration. And if you are anywhere um, contact compound and you, are, you need a, a good coverage, but you haven't the penetration, that means you are anyway losing your compound. And our compound are optimized. That means when we are even reaching the target with a big droplet, we added some spreader into our compound or in our mix. That means you are optimizing your coverage anyway. Thank you. Okay, so uh, yeah, the anonymous question we have here is, do adjuvants affect the droplet size? I think in, in general, uh, they don't affect really have a big influence on the droplet size. Uh, key is then pressure and the nozzle type you're using. 10% uh, can be influenced a little bit by an adjuvant using an adjuvant. But more key is, I think, what an adjuvant can do for, for the retention. So if the droplet will stay on the leaf and how the spreading will be. I think that's more important for an adjuvant or even the uptake into the leaf. That's more of key about using adjuvants. Okay. Also, don't forget we've got our adjuvants webinar in a couple of weeks time if you want uh, some more information on adjuvants from the team. So then we've got one from Dennis, actually we've got two from Dennis. So first of all, um, is there any effect of the flow rate of the solution being sprayed? Sorry. Uh, can is, you there any, is there any effect on the flow rate of the solution being sprayed? No, not that I... Okay, right. that's good. The, so the second one, which is the main question. Um, does the distance between the crop, crop or leaf and the nozzle affect the penetration efficacy of the solution? I think uh, the penetration, uh, not, but uh, the wetting of the outside of the crop, yes. Do you have something to add to that, Mark? Yes, exactly. In fact, you're right. Uh, a nozzle is optimized for a distance. That means you have an angle. And this angle has to be spread on a certain distance. That means for an um, 80 degree angle to cover the right, uh, the right, the, the right uh, spray thrust, you need 60 centimeters, 50 to 60 centimeters. That means um, if you are not, if you are too close to your target, you will not spray the right spray, spray thrust. And in the end, you have much more uh, liquid on the periphery from your from your uh, crop, because the first leaf which uh, which are reached with the nose with the droplets are wet, and you are creating runoff in this case. Okay. Okay. So um, a couple more. Um, God, there's actually quite a lot in here now. That's really good. Um, <laughs> That's good. Um, okay, so what is the relationship between spray timing and targeted pest? In um, spray timing, I think you talk about the time of the day. I think it's really important to bear in mind that when you spray uh, somewhere in, in the afternoon, that um, the humidity is pretty low. 
and the, the product will be dry in an instant when you think about that. So I think spraying time shouldn't be in that period of time, but should be early in the morning or late in the evening when time to dry is as long as, as possible. I think you shouldn't watch it at the target from that perspective, but be, be aware of that product. The uptake has to take place. Okay. Have you got anything to add, Mark? In fact, the, the, the point is, when you are applying, even if you are applying with, with uh, middle droplet size, medium droplet size, sorry, uh, you have a, a, a range of, of, of droplets. That means you have anyway small droplet size in this range of droplets because it's an average. Medium means an average. And if you are applying in the evening, you are anyway, if you have medium droplet size, you, are, you will anyway lose this small droplet size. You are losing less than if you would apply with a small droplet size in average, but you are anyway losing some. That's what we want to avoid. Thank you. So this is quite a specific one, I think. What is the recommended nozzle type for thrips? I think when you come, uh, when you look, well, we, uh, we want to do conduct some trials, of course, in the future in, uh, in Roses in Kenya. But I think when we look at, at the moment, at the situation now, and also the trips are located in the, in the butts of the, of the roses, as we saw with a medium-sized droplet, you can reach it easier than, than with the really very fine. So the recommendation would be, I think, the, the holocone air in, uh, induction nozzle. So you can create a little coarser droplets, so medium coarse droplets that reach the target easier than when you spray with very fine nozzle. I and guess that, sorry. Oh, yeah. I, I guess that is, for the moment they are, they are applying a high water volume and they think that they, with this high water volume, they are reaching the target. I believe so. Hmm. But in same time, if you are applying the real high water volume that me, with small droplet that mean you are increasing as well the runoff that again you are losing some money you feel that you are reaching the target but in the end it's a, it's not a win-win situation you are losing a big part of your compound in this case mm -hmm. that increasing the, the droplet size means increasing the penetration that means reaching the, the, the difficult target. The other thing I wanted to add, when you look at the trips, it's, it's, uh, it's feeding itself from the wax layer or the first layers of the, of the, of the leaf or the plant tissue should, it, should take uh, place some uptake. And when you, uh, you can only improve it by giving it the time to have to find the, the uptake take place of the, of the compound. Okay, so this is uh, perhaps less, less relevant to um, crop coverage, but I think it is, a, is an important one to cover. Suppose the product has been under proper storage conditions, but has been expired. Can it still be used? What would be the side effects of using this expired product? That depending on the formulation type, you, you can't just answer that from, uh, from behind the computer. Um, the, the problem can be when you have an expired product that uh, the formulation is, um, you have some, how you call it, Liz, on the, on the, on the bottom of the bottle. It uh, will residue. Be, yeah. Sediment. You have to shake, sediment. Yeah, it's some sediment, exactly. You have to shake it very well. And if you can't get the sediment out, it can, it can cause that it will block your nozzles. And then you have a problem and you have an issue. But normally we have an expire date of uh, two years and we're sure within those two years nothing will happen but we can guarantee it for a longer time and that's why they have this expiry date okay but depending on the on the formulation type so 
A question from Elijah. What should be the distance of air induction nozzles above flowers when doing top spraying? I think uh, that uh, what Mark already uh, mentioned, the distance should be 50 to 60 centimeters with an air induction nozzle. It's not different than with uh, the normal holocone nozzle. So the spray pattern is as best, as uh, most efficient when you have that distance. Okay. It's depending as well from the, from the angle. You have 80 yeah, degrees yeah, yeah. angle and you have uh, 110 uh, degrees angle. And uh, if That's you true. have 80 degrees angle, you need to increase a little bit the distance. That means around 60, 60 centimeters. To 60 to 70. Okay, um, so I'm just scrolling through because quite a few of them uh, are quite similar. So I'm just trying to make sure that we uh, get those all covered off. Um, okay, so this is maybe one uh, for the local team to help out with as well. Um, what causes resistance? I know it's not the, the topic of this presentation, but it's obviously quite, it is still quite an important. Um, aspect when using crop protection. Um, so, so what's your, your opinion on that? And maybe Victor, if you want to duck in as well, that'll be great. That's also a very good question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I think uh, resistance has got multiple issues that you can uh, talk about. So one like um, Ruud mentioned, if you have a poor spray deposition and you're not putting the right amount of dosage on the particular pest or disease, then you are, we are exposing the pathogen to sublethal dose. So the selection pressure for resistance then increases. So getting the right um, application techniques, the right coverage is quite important so that you apply the correct AI to the target. Um, and also sometimes um, without rotations, if you don't use um, different modes of action, on the pest, uh, then you could also be encouraging resistance. So we encourage that uh, you adopt a spray program where you have a diverse modes of action so that you can delay, delay the process of resistance. So I think there are multiple factors that you can look at when you're talking about the issue of resistance. Do you have anything else to add to that, Rude? No, I yeah, think that's pretty a good, that's yeah, a pretty yeah, good yeah. answer. The, the slide with the both trees uh, in your in your presentation was really very, was really clear. That means if you have only twenty percent from the from the from the compound reaching the middle from the tree or medium reaching the middle from the from the the crop, that means you are creating a resistance issue in this situation. If you have eighty percent outside. And, 80, and 20 percent in the middle, in this region from the crop, you are creating a, a resistance issue. Okay, I hope that helps whoever asked, asked that question. Um, so just scrolling through these, um, there's a lot of questions about um, droplet size um, when targeting thrips, especially um, as a specific pest. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking for if people want to, and some people have, have had some connectivity issues. Um, this we have recorded this webinar, so when these are over, we will upload them to our website, so you can watch it back. Um, and also, a couple of people are asking about the the tables um, that you presented. Maybe they could be sent out from the in the WhatsApp group potentially. Um, so we can maybe explore if we can send those out as well, because I think those. Will be quite helpful mm -hmm. okay um so then we've got a chap uh called david uh, from uganda mrl is a really big issue what do you think is the most common flaw in splay application application that leads to mrl exceedance the, the floor you mean so i think we have to distinguish uh, a few things mrl means maximum residue levels it's, uh, it's for consumer goods. So uh, okay. with consumer goods, I mean food. And nobody eats roses. So the first thing is when you look at an MRL, it's a maximum residue level and it's after good, uh, good agricultural practice. 
So when uh, a product gets registered, for instance, in peace, uh, there is first a good agricultural practice. So how often can you apply it? And then we carry uh, a pre-harvest interval. It means in a lot of uh, uh, cases for peas, for instance, that will be two weeks. So then they're going to determine how high in good agricultural practice the MRO will be on this piece. And they will say, okay, it will be up 30. We build in a little bit of, uh, of, of uh, risk. Uh, and we put the MRL on 50. It doesn't mean that 50 is not, uh, is uh, or when you have 70, it's not safe anymore. It just is a trade value, a number in trading. So for peas, it can be 30, but for strawberries, it can be 250. It's just about good agricultural practice. And after that, how much of the residue still can be in? When you then go to roses, you don't have a pre-harvest interval. You don't have uh, the same number of applications you have to apply. So it's really, I know you have to face it, but it's from, from one uh, perspective, it's really r ridiculous that you talk uh, in roses about MRLs, which are not existing. But when, what can uh, give you a higher uh, level of MRL, I think, would be that you don't respect a pre-harvest interval, if it exists. And the other thing is, how often did you apply the product in the period? So did you apply it three times, four times, or two times, or one time? This will determine whether you ex exceed the MRL or not. Thank you. Is it, it's, it's, a, it's a big explanation, I think. I hope it's clear what I mean, everything. <laughs> I think so. But it has nothing to do with food with security, in this case, for roses. Yeah. Uh, so in here, there's a lot of, uh, as I say, there's a lot of questions about um, droplet size and if you're, and foliage. I think it's, I think quite a few of these things were, were covered off during the, the presentation, as I'm just trying to, a couple of questions. What is the type, of, what type of nozzle affects volume? Um, That's determined lot. by the flow rate. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, as pressure. we're talking about water volumes next week. Yeah, three One to things. tune in for guys. <laughs> yeah, it's three things. It's the flow rate of the nozzle, it's the pressure you're using, and it's the speed where you're applying with. Those three determine how much your water volume will be. Very succinct. Yeah. Uh, I think we've got time for a couple more, which is, um, which is the best time to spray thrips given they're the most problematic insect in roses, morning or evening? Uh, <clears throat> I think both are good. As you know, trips, they're really scared of light. So they, they just getting away when it's really getting sunny. And from the other perspective is both times are really good because the period that the product, uh, the humidity is relative high. So the product can be, the uptake can take place a longer time. So I think both times would be suitable. That's good to know. Ruth, can you see the questions in the chat, in the uh, Q&A, or is it just me? Uh, I, I see them coming up, and then they are, oh, there they are. So, so, do you want to scroll through and see if there's any more that you want to answer? What's the optimum pressure with air induction nozzles uh, for greenhouses 200 meters away from the spray station? Well, we have to distinguish two things. And I was realizing that during the presentation, when we talk about the pressure, we talk about the pressure on the nozzle. So on the, uh, in the greenhouse itself. Because when you, sp you have a, a spray pressure in the pump house, the 35 bars, 
it doesn't mean at the end of the pipe and the end of the hose that pressure will be the same. Of course not. There's a drop of pressure. So uh, what's the optimum pressure for an air induction nozzle? As you saw, the uh, optimum for medium uh, uh, droplet sizes was, uh, I think, from 12 to 20 bars. But you can see that in a graph, which we will send to you. But you have to realize that this is on the nozzle itself. The other thing you also have to realize is the higher the pressure you do, the more water you will consume. And that's something we will come to back uh, next week. Yes, in in fact, the main the main question is what's the droplet size you want to reach and what's the flow rate you flow rate you want to reach. And this is giving you a pressure in the end. That means pressure is not the first question you have to you have to answer. The first question you have to answer is yeah. what's the flow rate and what's the droplet size I want. I agree. And which water volume do I want? Yeah, that's related to the flow rate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What is the effect of foliage on the effective coverage? Uh, well, that, that's, that's a good question. Uh, some, some crops are easy to wet, uh, others are difficult. I think roses are not really the most difficult to wet uh, leaf tissue. Uh, there are some. When you look at the vegetable uh, side, for instance, uh, brassicas, cabbages are really much more difficult to uh, to have an effective coverage on. Are you all... Oh, sorry. Are oh, you going to go for another one? Sorry. Yeah, what's the best size of droplets? Fine course when you're spraying a fumigant active ingredients. Well. <clears throat> There are not a lot of fumigant active ingredients anymore in the market, but then I would uh, I would presume to uh, to use a fine droplet because they have to be in the air. So the, the finer the better. Do you have to add something to that, Mark? I think you're right. Uh, but there are not a lot of products anymore. It's uh, it's peeling the carp. Whether nozzle types will differ with targets and pests and diseases. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's depending on uh, which uh, which target you want to control. If you have a target that's only in the periphery of the crop, well, you can you can choose to uh, to uh, use a little uh, a more a um, finer droplet. But the other thing is with which product do you want to do it? Uh, when I have a systemic product it's even more important. And I think when you uh, look at that with regard to that, you still come to a more medium sized uh, droplet than to a, a very fine. But okay, it's key when it's really outside, you could do it with a finer droplet, but still you have to bear in mind that the, uh, the, the systemic compounds, the, it's, it's too, too, uh, too early dry and with a lot of water on the outside, you will cause runoff. The, the other point for us as company now is to be clear. Uh, the message is for us, do not use any droplet size lower than medium. That do, do not apply with less than medium droplet size. Because the 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 risk is really too high, the risk of contamination, that means human contamination, but uh, environment, environment contamination is really too high using less than medium droplet size. I and that's fully, something we want to avoid. As I fully agree, I fully agree with you, Mark. Yeah, and it has also an influence on your efficacy, but I think yes. also on your, on your but our the first spend. point for us as company today is we don't want to contaminate the environment and we don't want to contaminate our growers. That mm. means, please, the official rule now is do not use something smaller than medium point. 
And from the other hand, Mark, I think also our purpose is that the uh, growers use the products in the best way, so they avoid uh, res um, resistance issues, and they have the best out of it from their product, which is also very important. Yeah, they should get the best out of it, and that's what we're aiming for. Does the location of the target affect the type of nozzle to be used? Well, as Mark explained, we want to start with a uh, medium-sized nozzle. But I can imagine when you have a really dense, dense crop that you even go to coarse or perhaps even very coarse droplet sizes to get a better penetration. Otherwise, you will lose everything on the periphery of the crop. What should be the optimum pressure to achieve correct droplet size plus penetration with medium sized uh, nozzles? I think we have to look at the, at the, at the graph it's, uh, exactly, but what, uh, what was already on the graph was between I think 12 and 20 degrees, uh, 20 bars. Mark? Right. That's, that's clear. Already. It's given, it's given by, by, the, by the nozzle provider. Yeah. That uh, if you are you it's and it's linked to the flow rate you want to to reach. That uh, if you have a no four nozzle or if you have a no two nozzle, or a yellow or a, a red nozzle, that's not the same. That means it's really something you have to check on your on your website on the website uh, nozzle provider. Another question is, how can you achieve small droplets during sprays? I think uh, we made it clear that we don't want to see small droplets. So um, I think that's not an answer we should, uh, a question we should answer from that perspective. Now, what's the recommended nozzles to be used in propagations, especially cuttings or standard canations? Well, they are smaller leaves, I can imagine that. Um, can you give an answer to that, Mark? Canations. Again, please. What's the recommended nozzles to be used in propagations, especially cuttings or standard canations? So on uh, young plant raisers, propagations. On young plantation, I would say uh, maybe uh, a flat fan with medium droplet size uh, uh, droplet. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Probably well, yes. And with uh, think about the water volumes because uh, I think with propagations you only have small plants. You should really reduce your water volume. I guess. Yeah. Because you are applying from the top. Exactly, and they are just small. Yes. They will. They, they will be dense with the the numbers of plants in it, but still, it's limited. Does the nozzle, uh, the type of nozzle affect volume, water volume? Yes, it certainly does. That's about flow rate. And you can look at, again, at the, the, what the, the manufacturer provides you on figures how in, your flow rate will be. In fact, the type of nozzle are not influencing directly the, the flow, the, the water volume. The water volume, it's a flow rate that you can have a nolocon air induction, which is giving the same flow rate as a flat fan air induction. That's the nozzle type, flat fan mm -hmm. or uh, holocon are nozzle type. Nozzle size is 04, 02, 05, that's the nozzle size. And the nozzle size is related to the flow rate. That exactly. you can have two different nozzle type with the same flow rate and the same uh, droplet size. It's clear enough. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I read it in the wrong way, nozzle type. But the next question is more or less the same. Does the nozzle type affect the water volume to use? I think it's the same. Uh, it's the, same the same. We are really to be clear. The nozzle type is holocone or flat fan or double flat fan or whatever. And the nozzle size is a no four or five or two or whatever, but this is related to the mm -hmm. to the flow rate. 
to what extent does putting sus suspenders or loosened nozzles affect the spray quality? I don't know what you mean exactly by that. Do you know, Mark? No, I did not understand the question, sorry. What's the correct angle for top spray? I think when you talk about a boom sprayer, it could be it's depending on how high the boom can be above the, the crop and what the spacing is of the nozzles. Exactly. It can be 50 to 25 deg uh, centimeters even when you have 80 degrees and you lower a boom and you have a distance of 25 uh, centimeters of the nozzles. That's also something you can find on the website from the nozzle provider. For example, a T-Jet or Lechler or uh, iPro, you can find on the website the right distance. You have some graph with the distance between the nozzles and the angle from each nozzle and the distance from the nozzle to the, to the crop. And yes, in, in this case, for example, if you have a, a, a 110 degree angle, that means 50 centimeters between the, the nozzles, that means you have to, to, you need a distance from the nozzle to the crop from 50 centimeters. But this, this is something you can easily find on the, on the website from the nozzle provider. What happens when you use same dilution rates at different volumes? Two kilos in 1,000 uh, liters or uh, two, two kilos in 1,500 liters? Well, it's clear when you want to have a good influence of adjuvants and uh, you make a, uh, a less strong solution, so a weaker solution, it means the influence of the adjuvants will also drop. So the more concentrated it is, the more effect the product will have. I think this uh, this is the answer to the question. In in fact, the question is uh, uh, is if they are applying the same uh, surface with the both water volume or not. Mm -hmm. um, this is a nice one. I think I disagree with spraying of traps late evening and early morning as the pest is not active in the growing tips of the plant. Oftentimes we see this pest active during afternoon hours when temperatures are high and low humidity. What do you think? I can understand uh, your remark. You're completely right. But I think then you only talk about products which have a contact uh, activity. But a lot of products, they have a, uh, only a feeding activity. So when you spray them in the afternoon when the temperatures are high and you have low humidity, when you have a feeding activity, they should be in the plant tissue. So when you spray, when there is not a lot of time left to get the product into the tissue, it won't be better, it will be worse. But again, when you have a contact product, I fully agree with you. Lovely. I think um, I think that was. We should make that the last question. We still have quite a few. Um, three left. Uh, oh, three left. Right? Yeah. Shall we? Do you want to answer the last three? Yeah. Let's do the last three. Mixing chemical solutions with a little water and spray the following day does this reduce the efficacy of the product? So again, this, this is depending on which compound you're spraying. There are products that really are unstable in, in water, but I think for the majority, one day leaving it, uh, you have to, uh, to uh, do the, uh, Mix it. the mixing uh, in a certain period, uh, on a certain time. I think it shouldn't be the biggest problem. But still, it's depending on which product you're using. And also, Rude, just to add on uh, yeah. to what you're saying, yeah. as part of good agricultural practice, just mix what you need for that particular day. Thank you, Victor. You're really right. You're completely right. Yeah. Thank you for adding this. Uh, it shouldn't be common practice to do, but I thought it's for, for my top of mind. Yes, uh, I had a, made a little mistake, but from your then you're completely right. Uh, only you make what you're using that 
that time. Mixing chemical solutions with a little water and spray it the following day, does this reduce the efficacy? It's the same. Oh, sorry, sorry. How can we effectively control mealybugs? Well, that's a that's a that's a pretty good question. I think uh, mealybugs are more in the uh, deep in the canopy. So the first thing to do is to to style at least to have a product with a um, that that can really uh, do to to spray it in a way that you can penetrate into the into the canopy. And then it's depending on which products you use and uh, if you can. Uh, um, if you can uh, improve the uptake by using perhaps some uh, some adjuvants so you have a better control on that. I think Does this, that means uh, increasing the droplet size to cross to maybe ultra cross, but because they have any they are anyway applying with high water volume, mm -hmm. that means it's 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 easy to to wet if you are applying with a high water volume with coarse or ultra coarse droplet size yeah. because you increase your penetration okay i think that's the last one um victor do you want to do just a little summary uh Rue, do you have any summary points to make i think you maybe you need to rest your voice for this afternoon I have some water still left here. <laughs> uh, many thanks, Liz. I think there are a couple of headlines that uh, we have picked from the presentation by Root. Um, I think one of the headlines that uh, we discussed was around uh, coverage, penetration, and uh, risk of drift. So I think uh, part of the recommendations is that uh, we need to look at the nozzle types. Uh, because they actually affect the aspect of uh, penetration and also the efficacy of the products. Uh, the issue of observing uh, weather, uh, mainly relative humidity and temperatures. Uh, I think uh, Rude summarized it uh, uh, quite well, that uh, the two parameters actually does affect um, uh, the efficacy of the products in terms of uh, spray retention. So it's something we need to, to look at. And I think for me, the key takeaway from Ruth's presentation is that uh, we have to look at um, the aspects of uh, spray application as influencing the results or overall results of what we do. So I don't belabor the point, but uh, uh, thanks very much, Ruth, for the good presentation. Thank you very much, Victor. Um, shall I do the next slide, Liz? Yes. Shall I say? Okay. Oh, no, I don't want to do it. So, okay. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> as we know, we've got, um, as you've seen from the, the WhatsApp um, messages and also from the email, we've got two more sessions. Um, so, next Wednesday, same time, uh, 11 30 and 2 30. Uh, we have um, the same session, but for looking at water volumes. So, some of your questions I know were surrounding water volume. So next week we're going to be diving into that in a little bit more detail. And then on the 20th of August, which is a Thursday, uh, again, 11.30 and 2.30, we have uh, a session which we're just going to be talking all about adjuvants. Um, and that will again be probably with Rude um, as well. So I hope you found his soothing tones um, informative. Um, and then if you would like to follow us on social media, if you don't already, uh, or on Twitter and Instagram, and also we have our website where in a few weeks time, these will all be uploaded so you can watch them back um, if you need some more information. Okay, thank you everybody.